Welcome back clickers. In this week's long YouTube video, we will be covering one of my favorite sections in physical sciences for grade 10, which is electricity. And you might think to yourself, electricity, why is that important? Well, it shapes the world and everything around us. The lights, our laptops, our phones. Yes, you guessed right, I've got two of these. All the circuits and the complex design that goes into making these, calling your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your mom or your dad calling you, is shaped by electricity. And the simple rules relate to parallel circuits, series circuits, current, voltage, resistance, we'll cover in today's lesson. I know in term one, you would have done the basics of physics related to Newton's laws. Term two, you would have touched on chemistry and all of your balancing equations, but term three is where things get really, really exciting and we delve into electricity. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to know about electricity is what is a series circuit and what is a parallel circuit? I remember when I was in school and I first started learning about it, I just knew that they were two different things, but I didn't know how they were different. So let's start off with the basics of a series circuit. To my left. Let's work through this. So in a series circuit what it actually means is that a resistor is in series with each other. They're next to each other. So for this example I'll adjust it slightly and I'll add a second resistor which is R2. So the key here is that two resistors are next to each other. They are in series. One follows the other. Those are your resistors. And what would A1 be? That is your ammeter. That indicates the current that's flowing through the circuits. I'm going to draw it in blue. And your current here would be IT in the circuit. And which way does conventional current flow? It flows, grab this, conventional current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. That way, Around. So it would be counterclockwise. And what are these two squiggly lines? That's actually your battery that has all of the energy in it, indicated by your positive and your negative terminals. And what is this V? Is this V for vendetta? No, it's not the movie. This indicates your voltmeter, which is the amount of work done per unit charge. Remember, V is equal to W over Q. And work is in joules and Q charges in coulombs. If you're not too sure, hop into our Instagram and you'll see a quick worked example I did related to series circuits. And now the key factor in a series circuit is knowing that the voltage across here is divided across the resistance. So if the current is flowing through here, I know that the voltage across resistor 1 is V1 and the voltage across V2 or resistor 2 is V2. So the total voltage Vt over there is equal to V1 plus V2. And you might ask me, Russ, this doesn't make sense. Why does that happen? Remember that resistance is the ability to resist the movement of a charge through a conductor. This could be a small resistor. So the energy that's lost across these two resistors, V1 plus V2, must be equal to the total that this battery is providing. Okay, so now you say, Russ, I understand the total voltage. The next thing you go, but what happens with the total current, IT? Well, that in a series circuit is equal to I1 equal to I2. The current that's flowing through resistor 1 and resistor 2 are the same. They don't split up, they're moving along the same track. So if you think about a river that's flowing, it's got a certain amount of water particles or volume. If it's flowing down the same river, that same volume passes down the same river. So the current does not divide in a series circuit. But the voltage is split across it. And that's important for a series circuit. Now we go to the next one, a parallel circuit. 
And I say, Rashford, what's the key thing in the parallel circuit? And I'd be, listen here, that your resistors are in parallel with each other. You see that? Parallel. Whereas here you've got them in sequence, which means in series. So our key factors here is I still have my total current flowing down this arm. I still have ammeter one. I still have my battery with my positive and my negative terminals. That hasn't changed. My voltage across the cells. And I can see that I've got two resistors here. So when my current flows down here, remember I'm flowing counterclockwise, conventional current, my current will split and I actually have I1 here and I2. So think about it as if you had a river and the river forked in the amazing Amazon. A certain portion of the river or the volume would flow to the right and a certain portion would flow to the left, which is what's happening here. And remember, current or charge moving through a circuit is very, very lazy. It always prefers to go to the path of least resistance. So if R2 is very, very small, a lot of current will flow there. And if R3 is very, very big, it will not want to go there. Kind of like your mom trying to convince you to do your chores and you resist it a lot, or your best friend comes to you and he's like, hey, let's go get food. You'd much rather go and do that. Think about it like that. So what happens in a series or a parallel circuit? I know that the voltage, V total, is equal to the voltage across the parallel circuit. V1 equal to V2. Because in a parallel circuit it doesn't divide. Whereas in a series circuit it does. Because I drop energy across each resistor that is in sequence. But in a parallel circuit my current divides. So I total is equal to I1 plus I2. Right, let me just rename these here so you don't get confused by the name. That's resistor 1 and that's resistor 2. Say, so, okay, but Russ, I'm really smart and I understand both a parallel and a series circuit because I can see that the current divides here and the current remains the same in a series circuit. And these examples are really simple. But if you understand these simple principles related to a parallel and a series circuit, when you get to more fancy, fancy stuff in advanced engineering, you start building circuits like this. This is what you call an operational amplifier. This is V in, this would be R2, and this would be V out. Although it looks a little bit complicated and hectic, trust me, the first time I looked at it, I was so confused. But what an operational amplifier does, it's your little fact for today, it takes an input voltage, a V in, the same as you put it on a battery, and it amplifies it to give you V out. And where would an operational amplifier be utilized? It would be utilized in a hi fi. Because remember, you put in your phone with a small headphone jack, and all of a sudden, that sound is amplified. It uses the operational amplifier. But it uses series and parallel circuits, which is exactly the stuff that you learn. So, let's actually dive in to a real example now. So, knowing the fundamentals between a parallel circuit and a series circuit allows you to unpack more difficult examples using these tools that I've given you. So look at this example on the left. I can see that the smart person in this one gave me a voltage of 15 volts across the battery. Resistor 1 is 5 ohms. Resistor 2 and 3 is 1 and 2 ohms respectively. And resistor 4 is 5 ohms. But this smart person, or the teacher, could be Mr. Hagelin, could have asked you, what is the reading on ammeter 1. Now think back or rewind back in this question and look that the current here in ammeter 1 is actually 
the total current, remember? It's the same as the current flowing here. Because I know in a series circuit, the entire circuit, the current is the same. So what would my first step be in trying to get this? So I understand Ohm's law, and I know that the volume, or the voltage rather, wrong section, current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance, which is the total voltage and the total resistance. But I can't just add this with that, because this is a, what is it? It is a parallel network. I can see that parallel. And this is series. So I have to convert this network first from a parallel network into a series network. So let's do that first in order to find out what the total current is, which would be IT. Now, the resistance in parallel, remember, 1 over RP is equal to 1 over those two are series, so you can say R2 plus R3, right? You can add them directly together because they're in series, plus 1 over R4. So what is that? It is 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 is equal to 1 over RP. Remember, I'm going to have to invert it, but I need to make sure that these are common denominators. So what's common between them? It would be 15, correct. So I need to multiply this by 5 over 15 plus, what's this? 3 over 15, which is equal to 8 over 15 is equal to 1 over RP. I'm going to have to invert this in order to get the resistance of the parallel network which is equal to 15 divided by 8, it will be 1,875. So now I know what the effective resistance of this network is. So I can actually change that and have it as one resistor. Because now I've effectively modeled the parallel network as a single resistor, as RP. I've got it as RP, which is equal to 1.875 ohms. And now that I've got resistor 1 and resistor parallel, I can calculate the total resistance, which would be RT is equal to 5 ohms. Remember, it's resistor 1 plus 1.875, which is equal to 6.875 ohms, right? And the last step that I need to do, I can say that the total current, remember I'm using this equation, the total current, IT, horrible handwriting, I T is equal to what's the total voltage that's been given? 15 volts divided by 6.875 ohms. So I T would be equal to, go ahead, punch that in on your calculator, tell me what it is, fill it in for the question. And now you've got it because you've taken the fundamentals of understanding the circuit, each component as a resistor, which is in series or in parallel, modeling it and converting it to an effective resistance, which you've got, and then using Ohm's law and calculating the total current of the circuit. Not that bad, right? And now, the homework question I've got for you, a little humdinger for today, and get you focused and make sure that you've actually learned something in this lesson. I want you to tell me and calculate what would the reading be on ammeter 1 assuming that this switch I've denoted here as S1 is open. What would the current flowing through this circuit be? Think about it, use that thing called a noggin, and 
and calculated. I hope you enjoyed this section on electricity. I have learning these fundamentals will equip you and empower you for bigger and greater things, hopefully in engineering, because that's the only thing I want you to learn, you get really focused for. And I'm sure that you've already commented, subscribed below, and already said how much you've enjoyed this lesson and more to come, because there's going to be more videos on electricity, on magnetism, electrostatics, all things physics and chemistry related for term three. But keep an eye out and if you don't hit subscribe and like and watch all of these videos, we can't keep you clicking and hitting more and more on what we do. I'll see you later.